Let's say it's a hot summer day and you're wondering why it's so hot inside the house. Or if it's a cold winter day and you're wondering why it's so cold inside the house. Well, on a hot summer day, what you want is that the house stays a little cold, right? And on a cold winter day, what you want is that the house stays hot. How do we achieve this? We would want heat to never enter the house on a hot day, and we would want heat to never exit the house on a cold day. What we're trying to do is minimize heat loss, and that's what we'll be discussing in this video. If you think about it, a vacuum flask achieves this entire thing very well. On a hot day, cold water stays cold, and on a cold day, hot water within the flask stays pretty hot. What the flask achieves is to ensure that heat doesn't enter the flask here, and that cold water stays cold, and heat doesn't exit the flask here, so that hot water stays hot. If we were able to apply the principles of a vacuum flask into our house construction, that would help us minimize a lot of heat loss. So let's dive into the concept of a vacuum flask so that we can learn and apply those principles in house construction. Now I'm sure you've studied that there are three ways of heat loss. The first is conduction. Let's see how a vacuum flask deals with conduction. Now, if you look at these walls, heat cannot exit through these walls. Why is that? That's because there's a vacuum layer between the hot liquid and the outside. And because of that, the only room for conduction is through the cap. And even there, because the cap is pretty small, there's minimal heat loss. So conduction is totally dealt with in the vacuum flask. What about convection? Hot air rises in the flask, but there's no room for it to escape because it's blocked. Right? And so even convection doesn't work here. What about radiation? Well, we know that everybody that radiates is radiating some rays like these. Right? The inner wall of the flask has a reflective surface. So any rays that exit the hot fluid get reflected and stay within the flask, because of which radiation also doesn't work. Now let's apply these principles of stopping convection, conduction, and radiation in our home construction. What if we made a home that's just like the flask, right? That would help. Let's see how we can stop heat loss through conduction in our homes. One of the simplest ways is to have a doubled walled house, and that's very common in cold places and places with AC rooms. For example, look at this house here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see that there's a gap between the walls. That gap acts as an insulator. That gap prevents heat loss through conduction. Well, there's more we can do with that gap. We could fill that gap with insulating material. For example, we could fill it with wood or mineral wool or sheep wool. There are a lot of other options as well. And if you want to know a little more about that, look at the video that I link up on the top right corner. I'll put it in the des description as well. Okay, now back to tackling heat loss by conduction. What do we do about windows? Well, here's the answer. We can have double walled glass windows. We could even have four glass windows, right? Look at this picture here. If you look carefully, there are four windows lined up one after the other parallel to each other so that there's no heat loss. This is one of the simplest ways of minimizing heat loss through conduction. Okay, now we've dealt with conduction. Let's move on to convection. Let's say it's a pretty cold climate and let's say you want to keep the heat inside the house. One of the simplest ways is to seal all the gaps. For example, let's say there's a small window or a small gap. You can seal that gap so that all the heat stays inside. What about hot climates? Well, if you think about it, we can use ventilation here. Hot air rises up and we want that hot air to exit the house. So we can leave some gaps of ventilation so that all the hot air can exit the house. Okay, so that was how we dealt with convection. What about radiation? One of the ways we can deal with radiation is, let's say it's a cold climate, we could use reflective surfaces here to keep the heat inside the house. Let's say we have reflective surfaces on the inside, we would be able to keep all the heat inside the house. What about hot climates? Well, we could keep reflective surfaces on the outside of the house, and that would help keep all the heat outside. Okay, so we were able to look at minimizing heat loss through conduction, convection, and radiation in house construction. 